Uh, what is your name, please? Shea Gardner Hyam. And you're from Chicago. Yes, I am. Okay, now you mentioned you're by way of Michigan? By way of Michigan. What part of Michigan are you from? Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay. You know, since you've been to Chicago, is that when you first got involved with genealogy? I would say so, yes. Why? Well, um, about 30 years ago when my grandmother died, uh, I was going through her effects and she had a picture of her grandmother, a picture of her grandmother, and I didn't know who she was. So consequently, I was very curious about who this, of this picture of this woman was. And then I remember as a child coming up, her sister, my grandmother's sister, used to always try to tell us about slaves, you know, the, uh, well, some of her descendants who were slaves, and nobody wanted to talk about it. So my Aunt Helen used to say things, but she would always be brushed off. And so consequently, I didn't, you know, I didn't have anybody else around me that felt the need to find out about family history at that time. You know, okay, now since you've been digging, how has your um, curiosity been strengthened or how has your concept of yourself uh, been more reinforced? Well, I find that throughout life you have to have an identity. And if uh, going back to Sinkofa, if you don't know where you've been, you can't understand where you're going. And I find that a lot of people, a lot of children, uh, especially in our community, the African-American community, do not have strong identities. They don't have strong histories. And so consequently, we have a lot of serious issues. You have serious psychological issues, which are very difficult to address because you need to know who you are. So let me rephrase that. I want to be real clear on that one. So if a person knew more about who they were, they'd have less um, social um, maladjustment issues? Yes, I believe so. I really believe that. I think that it would definitely improve their outlook on life. And you wouldn't be so susceptible to self-destructive behavior because everybody is a unique individual. Everybody has um, a background, something worth knowing about, something to be proud about. So tell me something about your Chicago organization. What does it do for you? Uh, you know, how does it keep you strong? It's a wonderful organization. I'm very happy to belong to uh, the Chicago Genealogical Society, and the reason why is because we have a lot of uh, activities. Uh, you learn a lot about how to research your family history. I was there on the periphery from almost the very beginning because I knew some of the founding members. And I remember back when we only had Black History Week. And during Black History Week, back in the 1970s actually, back in the 70s, a lot of the young people don't realize that back in the 70s, we only had Black History Week, not Black History Month. And we used to go to the library in Chicago and take our various artifacts and exhibit them. And we have a little uh, exhibit, a show and tell, so to speak. And it was really wonderful. I really enjoyed uh, interacting with the people. I enjoyed the camaraderie. I learned a lot of things about black people that I had never known. I had never known about the black waves like during the Second World War. Um, I, de I never knew that our history was so rich. But at that time, I was a young mother, and I, was, I, I came into myself, and I found out who our people were beyond George Washington Carver, beyond Booker T. Washington, beyond you know, some of the, the stock people that we got, what little we got in our public educations. The, the everyday people, 
that made history uh, in our families. That some uh, African Americans, as I say, were in the military. That some were Tuskegee Airmen. That some, you know, did some things uh, that, you know, uh, made us quite proud uh, before I was born. So a person, so what would your advice be to a person to, to get them moving forward? What, would you, what is the easiest way to get started in something like this, you know, especially in a town where they don't have a genealogical society? I think that you have to be proactive. You have to take charge. And if you don't have a genealogical society, originally I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and I uh, could relate to the Fort Wayne experience because Ann Arbor, like Fort Wayne does not have a sizable African American community. I mean, it's, you know, the community is more in the minority than, say, Chicago. And for many, many years, you know, you didn't have, uh, as a child growing up there, I didn't really know how rich the African American culture was there. So, uh, I think that it's important for the, the children in the community, for those of us that are in the community, we need to tell our stories. Because if we don't tell our stories, somebody else will. So I think that all of, these, all of the community, uh, Fort Wayne serves as an inspiration that if you have Africa, a sizable population of African Americans in your community, that you should begin to tell your stories because that's the only way that in the 21st century our communities are going to grow and be strong. Thank you very much.